Hello and welcome to Eratus, Lord of the Dead DLC, Wrath of the Necromancer. The original Eratus was a game I had on my wish list for a while, and the Wrath of the, DLC, uh, Wrath of the Necromancer DLC went out today. And I was so excited for that that I went ahead and jumped onto it. I did not spoil myself with any betas or anything like that, so I'm kind of blind to what's in this. So let's go ahead and jump into starting a new game. This is all outdated stuff from a while back, so we're not going to do that. We're going to go in with just the normal stuff, so you, everyone get a uh, get a feel for the game. We're going to skip the tutorial, and we're going to skip all the other auto-generation stuff and jump into the game. Now, what is this game exactly? You play as this dude, uh, in a manner of speaking, but mostly he'll be in the background as you uh, go about unlocking buildings and doing alchemy. But fighting dudes in this thing right here, getting talents, acquiring artifacts, making potions, but mostly what you're going to be interacting with are all of these little boys and girls up in here. These are your undead minions. There are a handful of them, they each have a different skill trees, can do different things, and these, uh, these two right down here are the most, uh, most recent additions to the game, the Reaper and the Abomination, and uh, I I have to pl try and play with the new ones, but I don't know what they do. So I'm going to take a sec to read over them with you. This are not going to spend too long in the description area or anything like that. We'll go ahead and we'll pop over to, I guess this is the abilities and the basic stats. Looks like they do not do a lot of str- Hmm. I'm going to explain more than I thought. The way it works is very similar to a game called Darkest Dungeons, if you ever played that, which I've considered playing on the channel because while I played a lot of this, I have not played a lot of Darkest Dungeons, so that's something to consider uh, to play on here. But it works like that, except you're on the other end of the role, and you're the ones doing a t trying to kill the adventurers, the quote-unquote good guys, stressing them out, trying to cause them to go insane and die of heart attacks and stuff like that. Uh, everything else is uh, pretty standard for these types of games. Health, uh, initiative, like, like your accuracy, your luck, which is uh, critical hit stuff, uh, dodge chance, and then block and ward, which nullifies uh, an attack of that type. So, let's go ahead and fill them in. What you do to make minions is you take the pieces of stuff over here that you're used to make minions, you fill them in, and you make a dude. And in the original, you could use higher tier versions of this to make better minions to upgrade them. Ooh, let's see. For each action it evokes a feeling of terror, dealing stress damage to all enemies. Oh, they have unique features as well. I forgot to mention that. Each new monster has a unique thing they do. A putrid engine of let's death. make them. Lovely. And then you have your different squads down here. And this one, the one on the far left is the one you're always taking to battle. And this is uh, the organization of your minions. Like who will be in the front, who will be in the back, that sort of thing. So now that we've made an abomination, we can take a gander at what he can actually do. And move on from there. He's got a basic slice attack and does just feels damage. Uh, that's 35% of his uh, maximum attack damage is what that says right there. And, and you have upgrades and I'd only give you passive abilities, uh, about passive ability increases. Like if you go right, you'll get more initiative to try and go first more often. But it also changes how the ability functions, where this just increases the attack power. And if you go this way, it has a chance to stun a target every time it connects. So you got three chances with a 15% roll to try and stun your target, plus you have a luck increase on top of that, which is super nice. Uh, you can see on the abilities right here where it says slice those green skulls and red helmets, these skulls are where your minion has to be standing to use this attack, and the red skulls are what he can hit with it. So you can also buff himself, and then no matter where he's at, he moves forward two spaces to head to the beginning of the, uh, beginning of your line to take the hits up there. That's very interesting. That changes his entire thing to go from hunger doing attack power buffs to doing uh, stress increases, which are interesting because of his new uh, his feature where he evokes terror just from his vile presence and all that fun stuff. Intimidating more enemies in the chosen position and the next mission in line switch to random ones. Switching enemies out of positions is pretty uh, pretty useful. Let's see support ability. Intimidates all enemies and inspires all allies for two turns. Enemies lose initiative, evasion, and accuracy, and your allies get into that much mass. And this ignores ward, which is pretty nice. This uh, focuses more on buffing your allies. I'm assuming this one is more focused on debuffing your enemies. So you, have, you pick one, you need to go with that. That's pretty cool. You have a stance you can do. Mark an ally. Redirects all the targeted damage from the ally to the abomination. Hmm. It deals any damage to the enemy that affects the abomination. Just a basic thorn auras type thing. 
5% chance when you get deflect to instantly kill the attacker. That's pretty nuts. Or you can get more max health and do 100% damage and under the abomination to the attacker, which makes him a really good frontliner and maybe a better position too to start off the battle with because he can just advance forward with hunger. So we're going to do that there just preemptively. And then his mega attack. He has an ultimate ability, and ultimate abilities cost a resource called uh, Rage, which you can use with Aratus himself since you're overwatching and doing all that stuff yourself to do the battles. Or you can use it on your uh, uh, minions to try and activate their supers, like this one, to instantly destroy an enemy that has less than 20% sanity remaining after receiving damage from this ability. The Abomination receives a buff for storing vigor until the end of combat. Ooh. That is a pretty uh, decimating ability, which uh, makes sense over here. That's part of the other name, where you can target anybody from any position, eat them. This one does more of a focus on your heal, while this one seems to focus Ooh, more on stress am damage. Am I in the mood for terror or lethality today? Oh yeah, and Aratus does a lot of uh, commenting. And since I've been supporting this game for a while, we got all kinds of fancy skins, and... The armor and plating instead, it's kind of nice. And I feel like the green has some like substantial stuff to it, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, scale back on that for now. Go back to creation and try out the other brand new units. It's, it'll be interesting to try out something new for me, and since it's brand new, we're gonna use it. How can we not? Bam! A Reaper. Let's check him out. Let's check his skins out real quick. Do a golden one, obviously. I like the horn. It's got kind of a. Uh, what is that? Uh, Conquistador feel? Is that what I'm going for? I don't know. Let's toss him up here for now. Check his abilities. He can attack from anywhere to the front too. And it moves him forward. That's pretty good. I'm not going to worry about the other ones for now. Spectral Wave is a magic attack. So it interacts with Ward instead of uh, other stuff. Ignition. If he's in the back, he can ignite a target dealing damage and curses them also dealing stress damage to them as well. That is a pretty good multi-faceted uh, ability. Support removes all buffs from the target, interrupt stances, and doesn't miss. Uh, ooh. His fun is also pretty interesting. Uh, Erratus also receives spell power for four buff turns, so he's really good if I go for a mage Erratus build, which that's going to be what the talents are about. We'll look at that in a minute. And he has a Scythe of Death. For each 1% vigor and sanity is missing, total, it all gets converted to physical damage, and maximum physical damage is equal to 400% of your stuff. What are you doing? Your feature is when killing an enemy, Reaper restores 10% vigor to itself and all minions. Working really nice in tandem with the tank if we can make sure it kills somebody. So we'll probably focus on buffing up and act like a, uh, a pseudo healer in a way. And his positioning is interesting. Um, I can't... I don't really get anything amazing from putting him from the front in the beginning. So I think we may put him in position 3 for now. And then we're going to go back and see who we want to work in tandem with them. I usually love having a bone golem as the at, like the frontliner because they have the ability to heal themselves, shield allies, and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But we're going to mix it up for the sake of fun and use someone else. Let's see, we have ghouls. Ghouls before were kind of a hit or miss thing for me because... Uh, I don't know, it just, it didn't, they did a lot, but to get the most out of them, you have to attack an ally to get uh, some health restoration, and then you like, have weird stuff with uh, digesting and, and the lunch break ability, and, and just kind of funky. Maybe I'd be considering using it here, but I'm not sure. Hmm. We're going to be putting him into position one on his turn, right? So, because we're going to use hunger to jump him forward. And so he can use pretty much anything from position two. So this is a decent spot where we can have him jump and tank. Enemies can hit whenever they want over here, but they have the same limitations we do, where they can't hit everything with all of their abilities. So positioning's pretty good. You definitely, you generally want to have the uh, harder hitting tankier boys up in the beginning. So we're probably going to focus on doing that if possible. We may go with the good old Dark Knight. The original uh, ones up here that we usually make you start off with. But then again, I haven't used the zombie in forever. And zombies make a pretty decent frontliner too. They can do pretty much anything from their first position except for the uh, bombardment ability. But then again, uh, if you're in the front, you can use buckshot and you know smack up a bunch of people after you buff yourself up with more power. Or more powder, excuse me. And uh, even more powder for better accuracy. 
And just keep stacking that up, keep taking hits. We'll double check, you have to, from any direction, you can do dissection so you can move around. I think. You know what? I haven't done a zombie in forever. We'll do a zombie. No brain, but all fire. And then power. towards the back, I also like. Oh, hold on. I forgot to show off the zombie skins. I don't have all of them. I missed, like. Like a Halloween event, I think. This satyr looks fucking cool as hell. We'll go with the basic zombie, though, for now. I missed, like, a Halloween event, so unfortunately I can't get all the way into the festive season, but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll be able to go back and reclaim that. And if we go with this guy in the way back, he can do physical damage, do magical damage, do support stuff to destroy traps. Traps can be pain in the ass, and he can also freeze minions to help them recover stuff. The only thing he can't do is his ice wave attack, which is pretty good, but, uh... I mean, it's not necessary. Like, we don't have to have it there. He's a better position three. And you can move forward all over the place. There's a lot of moving around uh, with, with these two. So maybe we can afford to go ahead and put him in the back. Or, but maybe it's better to go ahead and just focus on someone who is more backline focused. A uh, good one for that would probably be just to go for a bride. Or uh, maybe a banshee. She can't do her soprano, which kind of stinks. But a bride... Bri can shoot from way in the back, do a ton of damage, she can't do Flames of Love, she can't Overwatch, she can't think of him, and she can Warning Shot to interrupt stances. So I think we're going to go with the Bride. We'll treat her right, and hopefully she'll treat us right too. And she does plus 10 luck against female enemies out of raw jealousy, which I think is a fun feature. Check her out. I usually like to go with the golden hair just to treat her right. Sure that I care, but we're going to move on from there, move to something else. Let's see what our talents are, what we want to do. Let's see. Minions get... These are passive abilities to minions for... What is that? Magic? That's interesting. Isn't like it actually uh, cost to magic to use. That's something to go about. But maybe we want to go with... I just... I kind of like going with destruction because this... Uh, not only are things like this like reduce damage or like do direct damage stuff, which is kind of brainless. Just, you know, hurt them, of course. But also, it can this can jump through an enemy through a lot of block, and that sounds pretty great. And then you can uh, go ahead and start buffing up your own wrath and stuff. But then again, there's alchemy. Hmm. And alchemy lets you. The, the sooner you like put points into alchemy, the sooner you start getting uh, back more from the souls. So the I think we're gonna go into that. Secrets. Get more muns. Because you can use that to start upgrading your graveyard, which, uh, let's see. 32 experience, and we want, let's see, we want to pick up a good thing for the graveyard. We can start getting more experience earlier. Uh, we can start getting more, uh, whoops, that goes back to where we're actually just chilling and hanging out. Let's see, trying to find random parts to upgrade our minions. We can try and, uh, get more here. Not really any reason to do that, I don't think. Or we go to the arena to the, uh, have our minions gain XP in the background. I think having our big boss man get the most XP is what we want to go for, so we got to go have a specific minion done and filled out for that. So Hardly we're going to go to Dark Knight. Leader, but the dead cannot for morale. So, now that we've got him, and we'll look at more of him later, we have our, our souls, and we're going to spin them and the unit How unfortunate to unlock I the library. So he's there doing this, my power. and then he will start... It's akin to trying to quell hunger on. with breadcrumbs. There we go. Like, Erodus is going to talk a lot, so he may speak over me, but we're used to that if we ever did the, uh, the XCOM playthrough. Let's go to whatever artifact we have. We start off with one random one, I think. Jar of Acids, pretty good. Lowers their uh, armor and resistance, so we just straight up do more types of damage to them, which is exactly what we want. We have Alchemy, which lets you create and do weird stuff to uh, people, which uh, you can use them to convert parts into a better type of rarity, turn them into uh, vigor for your people, convert to a different loop part altogether, or transform them into brains or items to get mana back, which uh, all of that's pretty good. I kind of just want to make an item, like a little bit, but I don't really, I don't really care for it. It's not like a super important thing. Let's say restore mana, get an item, 
and we can give one of these items to one of our units is uh, what I needed to get around to saying there. But I don't think we're going to worry about that yet. A new feature is potion making, which uh, I have no idea what this is about. Using potions to a chance, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it's just for one battle or how that's supposed to work. I assume we'll fiddle around with it more whenever we experiment. Uh, looks like we need a flask, maybe? I'm not sure. What do we have excess of? I guess we can do uh, some dust, some rags. These are good. It's going to be basic no matter what it is. And then we might get something useful. Perfection takes time. Uh, and enemies lose accuracy for two turns. Why not? It's something new. Let's play around with it. Let's go check out the dungeon. Before, I think you only had like the original three or four floors. I don't remember um, exactly how many there were. But what you do, you start off at the very bottom in your crypt, and you got to make your way up. There's branching paths to decide how you want to continue doing things. But uh, we don't have a branching path right here. We are just going straight into battle versus these uh, horrible, horrible homeboys right here. Alright, so we have the initiative. We have a few spells that we can use, and this, I think this regenerates between battles, and we can kind of move them around as needed. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to, let's see... No need to increase our spell power, since we don't have spells yet. I don't know if we want to move around just yet. Probably not. Let's go ahead and put... Uh, this man back here in Agony. Curse and Ignited. He's going to take all kinds of damage over time now. Now we can... Uh, we don't need to move them around. We can mark somebody and take damage for them. But I think we want to do battle thumping, right? That just sounds really good. Debuff them all, buff all of us. They take stress damage from uh, his ability as well. Her back here is nuts. She gets to get bonus attack power just by thinking about how wonderful I am for the rest of the match after she does that. They are slow as hell, aren't they? And then, do we want to do powder to shoot them down? Maybe not. Mm. Igniting mixture can make... Uh... You just light everybody up when you do this, right? Yeah, everyone's on fire. Which is a lot of fun. Sinister Strike. If they have a strike or a stance ability, what that does is that they are setting up for a particularly amazing attack. But if you can force them to change their stance, then they can't do anything. So we can just be like, nope. Mark that down. Then we swap over to our lady over here. His stance is interrupted, so basically he lost his turn. And we'll go ahead and take shots at uh, you. 34 big old points of damage. Here's another feature, insanity. Whenever they go insane, they have, have a chance. The more stress they take, the higher chances they have of going insane. And whenever you go insane, they gain a random permanent behavior. And that can either be a good one for us, which is cowardice, so eventually they'll just be like, oh, screw this and leave. And they do stress damage to a whole of their allies because they're just like, run, let's get out of here, which, you know, breaks morale. Or it can be something that's like, result, like strengthens their resolve and spur spurs them on to heroism. Hello, Iris. And I don't think we want him to die, actually. And the reason we don't want him to die is because we do not want to lose the body parts we could potentially get off of keeping him around. Uh, I don't know how long this lasts. It lasts for two turns, so we have another turn to just do whatever we want here. I think we want to, uh, step up. Ooh, that should do stress damage. It does! <laughs> Let's see, okay, block blocking the entirety of the damage from that attack. Going for a hit on the zombie. Interesting. Alright, so we can try and use Dissection, 20 to 28 damage on this guy. You can see the bottom right of the enemy's stats, but there's no reason to do that just yet. It would put us in the line of fire, and we just lost our block, but there's no reason to not do this attack. It's the most damage. We can set up for a kill in the future, and if we would have crit, then we just went went down. Stress damage from his cowardice, making things a lot more dangerous for him. Intimidating Roar, eh, no reason to do that either. We can just slice a man up. I think we want to leave him up, maybe, for him to kill. If we could just set up a multi-kill, that would be incredible. But I don't think that's going to happen. We'll, we'll keep going for the guy in the back, I think, as soon as we can. Oh, my goodness. Disgusting. Alright, that's going to set him up. Crit and a crit debuff on him. He is stunned, so he skips his next turn. 
So no, uh, we will take more damage than we would heal, waiting for us to turn and go back around. So we're gonna use one of her wrath abilities, which is hit everybody and we'll crit. Less annoyance in the world. And that's why we take the bride, girl. It's so good. I love my brides. Get souls, get weapons, get active plasm to build other units. Now, the bad part about this is these guys are now hurt. They are hurt until we decide to do something to heal them back up. So and that, that feels pretty bad. And now we have to wait around to get another increase to Relic Seeker, which I think I do want to wait around for because just uh, getting other artifacts, that's pretty great. But the sooner I put mother, more points into an amateur surgeon, the better chances I get of uncommon or better parts, which will make us have better Through minions. So I want to wait around, the wheel but I don't think I'm going free. to. And now that we have a hurt uh, minion, we have to go to our mortuary to get them to start healing up. And we'll just take them there. And after that, we're going to go try and get another minion to replace him for now. We're not going to worry about too much about the Reaper. He can kind of heal himself up, so it's not that big of a deal. We're going to look for someone else. Let's see. We can go with the classic skeleton. Those are not bad, but they're not uh, too incredible either. They can be good. They can be good, uh, depending on how you want to uh, how to spec them up, because they can do all kinds of silly stuff in an effort to show up that even though they're a basic skeleton, they're not to be underestimated. But. I'm not really feeling it. I kind of want to go for a Black Widow. They're pretty good at the front. Like, all of their abilities are based on them being in the front of the party. So, I think we're going to go with her. I'm not interested in any engagements, dear. I already have my brides. And we'll start working on making a better Black Widow. Ooh, I like the red one. But we'll go with the basic skins for now. We'll start dolling them up whenever we're sure they're not going to be uh, killed. Because your minions do level up over time. The Abomination did a lot of work, so he's closer to a level. And when he does, we can start bumping into one of these, which we'll review when we get closer to actually having them. Uh, we have more Digger Souls. We have two Flasks, so we could make potions. But I don't think I'm very interested in doing that yet. Let's go ahead and move on to... Ooh, we can sacrifice a minion to get parts, so... Let's make a minion. Who requires the most skulls? Since we have an excess of skulls and weapons, we can get rid of those to try and uh, get better stuff back. I think we may go ahead and sacrifice a bone golem because we have so many skulls. We have a couple of bones too, so I think this is fine. We'll sacrifice ah, him at the altar. This is what a necromancer's war machine looks like. I love me some bone. Oh, that looks incredible. I love me some bone golems, though. This might be my favorite unit in the game. I love my tanks, but... Uh, let's see. Battle Squad 1. We're heading this direction. And we will throw the bone golem onto the offer. Sacrifice him. Get skulls back. Get a bull skull. Huh. Interesting. And... Okay. Alright, cool. Let's, uh... Let's go to our artifacts because this is a one-time use artifact but this makes it we well, get 50% more of the experience from the current level hold on yeah that's fine we just want to go ahead and get that uh, going as fast as possible and apparently eventually you can disintegrate artifacts as well this is a new feature I'm very interested in that and restored after every battle it's five spell power is currently just one we'll get more eventually and do we want to use our flask? Probably not. Probably not. But we will go ahead and start sticking items onto our boys and girls here. How about we put the bull skull on our lady here? Uh, position one or two. They receive five vigor until the end of battle. Stacks up to five times. Her abilities. Can she restore vigor? Let's make sure she can do that and also like move around properly. So she gets thrown to the back, she can move all the way to the front. That's pretty good. And we want her to be in the front, so I, this is fine. We'll put that there. That'll stay there for now. Anyone else have a skull that we need to install anywhere? No, no skulls needed, so we'll hang on to this uh, skull right here. We'll just give two more stat points. Let's see what we can do with that later. But now it's time to move on to the next fight. So you can get a preview of what's coming. We don't really care because we can't split. We have to do this, but you know. Bad. Starting off, getting more skull power right there. 
Spider Pack does a lot of damage to a random enemy. I forget what her effect is. Uh, I should have checked before I went into this. Where is it? Is it visible? Might not be visible. I do not know. But we don't need to heal yet with this. This allows you to heal somebody. Or I think just her herself maybe. So we're not worried about that. We can, like, can you lose luck and evasion. We don't care about that. We can make them do less damage and pull whoever we want from the third to the front, which is pretty good. And poison spit where they lose armor and resistance. No, not really. They don't have a lot of armor and resistance. Like at all. I don't know if it can go into negatives. But we're not worried about it. Let's just do a spider pack. 21 damage to the guy in the middle. Not too bad at all. Uh, I think we're going to throw some agony onto the singular unit right here. I forget what his deal is. But I do know he's gotten blocked and starting to do something to him is pretty good. Take a turn to buff. And let's see what he wants to do. Block and a miss. You know that's gotta feel bad. Battle thumping. Debuff them all. Buff all our boys. And... We got misses, which feels really good when he misses the misses. I deserve that. I should probably have gotten hit twice for that one. <laughs> should we just keep throwing spell power like stuff around? We don't have any stances to interrupt. What are you, what's, what's going on here? Spider Venom. Oh, he, she applies Venom. Okay. Okay, okay, that's really great. Uh, let's double down and just make his life as, as bad as we possibly can. Put all the dots everywhere that we can. Another spider pack, maybe. Uh, I don't really know if it's necessary. Pull, the pole is definitely not necessary. Let's go with just a random full damage attack on somebody. Spread that spider poison around. And then we can go back here. Do we want a warning shot? No, we don't really need to, need to go after stress. They're not moving around, so I guess we're just going to put more damage on you. When enemies die, it does a lot of stress to uh, allies as well. Their allies, I should say. Not us, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now that we've done that, what do we want to do? We can go hunger to move to the front, or we can just start slicing people up. I think we're going to slice, because it'll like, get through that block. I didn't even think about that. He'll be good for stripping the block off stuff in the front. And now they're moving us around. You hate to see that. Miss, let's see, we're looking at 23 health here, so it's quite possible this will uh, kill him, which will give us a little bit of health back. A big chunk of health back, actually. I like this Reaper. And now we have the spider web to cast a web over enemies, making them where they can't move. That's not really important. What's important is just doing more spider strikes, and we got lucky and get the guy we wanted. And then we can uh, hit the rose with the lady. Just do big damage, crit them both. Looks like he, instead of being insane, was uh, got unlucky, and he decided he's going to be mighty, increasing his damage dealt, but damage received is also reduced. A lot of bad stuff for us. Uh, I think we are going to reset our battle thumping. Make sure they keep that buff down. Didn't hit. That feels kind of bad. Big damage to our spider lady. Eh, relatively big, but we're gonna get a kill here. And heal even more. This is how a necromantic cleric is supposed to work. That's a good boy right there. Cut and trample. And then we uh, just spider pack him. I wonder how much we can double down on spider venom. Looks like we've gone up to two. They're losing health and sanity every turn. You'd almost feel bad for the poor bastard. We don't, but almost. 33. And I think we may keep a Wrath between fights. Like, that's something I'd want to put money on, but hey, we got another one of these right back. That feels pretty amazing. Ashes of a Burned Witch. That's a pretty sick thing. All of these have really cool names. And our zombie is back up to speed, but there's really no reason to bring him back out. The Widow is uh, pretty good. Our DPS is not incredible, I'll admit, but it's pretty good, honestly. Let's see. Two stats. What do we want to do with you, miss? We can give you some armor. We can give you some more attack power and make you lean more heavily onto doing this. I'm not sure if I want to do that. To a random enemy that ignores armor or two random enemies and just spread the spider venom around. It's only with damage. 
all abilities apply spider venom. Okay, and it goes up to five. So that's pretty good. Multi-targeting, it might not be a bad one for her. Your accuracy is okay, honestly. At, uh, at 105, is not bad. I kind of want to just go into figure or maybe a point of armor. Let's go for a point of armor. And that'll keep her uh, nice and tanky for, well, uh, for a while, actually. Set enemies on fire for two turns and a minion uses an ability. Five damage with AoE abilities. Wow, these are really good uh, things to start off with. Single target abilities, AoEs. I think we want to go with the Abomination, actually. So let's go for his stats. We'll give him some more uh, accuracy, I think. That seems pretty good. And we have another point we could spend around, which will be attack power. We want him to hurt. And he has got some really good abilities right here. We'll give him the Ashes of the Burn Witch. And then I think... Who's got poor accuracy? Anybody? Not really, but out of everybody, he's got the worst. So I guess we'll do ahead and give him the Eye as well. Kind of showing some favoritism, but I really like the Abomination. He, uh, he jabs with me, as the kids are like to say. Definitely going to give you the attack power boost. We want you to be doing that, and we definitely want to give you more accuracy. You get huge chunks of accuracy when he gets that upgrade there. So they definitely have their uh, areas where they're better. Um, we're going to get more attack power on her, though. That's her job. She is our murderer. She is the finishing hit. She is the business. We're going to keep her in that area. Uh, keep that going for as long as we can. Let's see, we're not using distillation or calcination currently. We're not at that point in the game where I feel like I am pressed into doing that. We can get some magic. Start uh, filling around with that. Let's see, spell power reduces mana spent by 1%. Oh, just lean heavily into it. That's pretty good. No need to get mana, uh, mana restoration until we actually start uh, you know, having mana. We can start, just, we can save with the talent points. Increase chances to receive artifacts in the battle by 20%. I think we're going to save with the talent points and just start getting uh, making bank off of that later. Let's go to our graveyard, see if we can unlock anything else. We could we could put a um, guy in here for that, but we do not have the current uh, souls for that. So maybe somewhere else. No, we still need 25 for pretty much anything it looks like. I don't think that I can create souls either, so that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, we could, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What do we want to do? Make potions, maybe? I, how do I do this? What do I do? How do I... How do I use the potions, actually? I don't know where I drag them to. Huh. Oh, well, I guess I'll just uh, fit all around. Skulls and weapons. Something is wrong. Okay, so that does it tells you when a combination just isn't going to work, I suppose. That's something to keep in mind. Something is wrong. No, that's not going to work either, huh? Maybe we get recipes later. Let's see. Kind of low on blood. Something's wrong. Ectoplasm. Something might be. Hey, there With we go. Something knowledge else. and will comes victory. Recovery broth. We'll look around in our. Uh, What do you call it? Destroy it? No. Oh, whatever. We'll look around in our next fight, see if we can find it. Let's see. What direct? Now, here's the thing. Where do we want to go? Mortal Cultist gift with random consumables and minion specific items. Or we can go to the left, which you use to get levels for Erratus or his minions. Or we can go to uh, get more souls right here. Triple branching path, and we want to kind of plan ourselves around this. A bunch of cultists could be interesting. A quest is pretty good because I believe you get something difficult and you get an amazing reward out of it. These, this is a lot bigger than I remember, like by far. This is pretty huge. But then you do uh, elite fights, which is what I want to do because I believe you get really good materials out of doing that. So the be fastest way to a quest, I think, would be to head up this way. There's a chest right there we're going to miss the cultist if we do this but this is just like free xp for the man himself and we want to start getting a as leveled up as fast as possible because as long as you exist 
you can uh, get more buffs for your minions. And since we just got that, let's go ahead and get another thing. Ooh, a surgical practice. Oh, and it feels increasing the chance of getting better parts going up, but getting artifacts, man, I mean, Transformation. we still have becomes free. a lot of artifacts to pick up. We're going to get another one of these. Ah, I want fetching. my boys and girls to level up as fast as possible. So let's go ahead and go to another battle right here. And then I think we'll uh, check our time. It might be, maybe be done because it took a little while with introductions. Traps. Traps suck. When you start there, you have a bad time. Let's see. What do we want to do to start this off? I think we want to go with a good old chunk of agony on somebody. I'm not worried about stances. What he does when he dies is enemies recover sanity because he treats them so poorly that when he's dead they actually celebrate. We're not going to worry about him. We're going to worry about this man right here. Curse and ignite him because he looks like he's going to do a whole lot of stuff to us. She is just having a bad time, that poor girl. Let's think of him. Think of us. Think of ourselves, I guess. And we'll see if Battle Thumping uh, hits the way I think it does with Ash and the Witch. <laughs> it does! <laughs> oh, that's that's going to carry us for a little while in these beginning stances. Oh, we got a speaking of stance, we got a buff up right there. Let's see. Do we want a Spider Cocoon ourselves? After each minions or enemies action and recover a little bit more 100% chance to redirect any attack to target any minion position behind the black widow to her she becomes a new target i think that's fine she's taking a lot of hits and she's in the trapped area so we'll, we'll put her away she'll be fine any agony we want to spread around we don't want to move to the front position because when we land there the trap is going to hurt us i don't think we want to do that which means we're going to spread more agony which is more uh cursed stuff around we'll put that on you Night and curse you. Yeah, I'm so... Don't like that, but what can you do? Let's interrupt his stance over here. Because I believe... Every minion moves attack it for 100%. Yeah. We may have to do some moving around. We're not, like... We don't really want to, but, you know, it, could, it might be something we have to do. We could force him to switch to random positions all over the place. Not sure I want to do that. We can just go for hunger and just screw things up for that kind of stuff. But I think we're just going to slice. Do what we did before and get the block off of the weaker attacks. <laughs> Insanity afflicting this man. Cowardice. Oh. Yeah, good thing she's in her <laughs> <hero> stance. <laughs> Both of us, doesn't matter. She is free! She is free, my lads. Uh, do we want to let them not move around, or do we just want to cocoon again? I think just having her keep tanking for now, that seems fine. And we have access to the Scythe of Death. Uh, for each thing that they are missing, they uh, will do more damage, which is... We just straight up execute this man, right? And that would heal her some up some more. But that would use a lot of this, and we could just crit the entire line. Is he coming up soon before he gets his attack? Probably not. So I think we are going to just put more agony, spread that around. Put that on, uh, let's see, you're down to one turn on that. You're down to one turn on that. Pull at night and curse you. Make you have a horrible bad time. And then we can go ahead and just fire <laughs> on. This Crits do stress damage. Old. Allies being killed does stress damage. <laughs> So, uh, having a pretty good time at the moment. Let's see, I think we just want to go with Spider Pack. She's healed up enough, and we want to get some more damage out there. Go for him, 18, Spider Venom. Uh, do we want to go with Shield? The block's down, so maybe. I think we'll go for the Shield on her. Ooh, more insanity. Really making things, uh... Bad for our people back here. Go with the Reaper! Counter shanked. And the Ignite hits him. Okay, that's even more fun than I thought. Alright, so now we definitely put the kill on the you so we can heal up, right? 160 damage. Heals up the whole team. Cut and trampled indeed. 
And then we, uh, do we, we can't spider cocoon our boy. I think maybe with an upgrade, maybe we can spider cocoon one of our boys, but as is. No dice. <laughs> Killing him last because we're not getting a whole lot of, uh, anything out of him being killed before anyone else. Plus, he's got the mighty. I would prefer to kill this guy just so he can't escape. Unfortunately, he missed a shot. So we're gonna go ahead and take him down. We want your parts, oh, sir. I need good. you to die for that. More materials. <laughs> I didn't think All right. that would Real be low. Easy. Doing a lot of damage for it, but maybe we can get. Oh, hold on. We have another side to death. We'll do that and heal up the entire squad. And mop up the gore. I'd Ooh. hate to see plants using it as fertilizer. Not bad. Getting an artifact that boosts our attack damage and our dread damage. And of course, leveling up our main lab. Let's go ahead and put that on so we don't forget. That's not the most amazing thing, but combined with this, we're, we're doing a lot more damage than I originally think we would have been doing. And we'll do an upgrade on our boys and girls. Let's see, stat increase. Worry about that in a second. What do we want to upgrade first? We can't upgrade a, an ultimate ability until level 15, unfortunately. So we'll have to do something else until then. I'm thinking of upgrading our... Uh, bride abilities because that increases her attack and damage by a pretty substantial amount. But if we do this in combination with our Reaper, who has another ability that also increases our spell power, then when these two work together in tandem, we will have uh, a whole lot of extra oomph that we can get when we finally decide to give ourselves spells, which I mean, maybe we can go ahead and get one. What do we need? Like, oh, maybe not. I think we keep saving it up. Oh no. Alright, so we're not going to worry about spell power increases just yet. We'll go with something else more uh, immediately substantial. Let's see. Evasion while it's active. Ignore stance. Eh, it's fine. Chest piercer is her bread and butter. Critical hits will stun the enemies for one action. Bosses immune to crits. I don't think I want to stun them. I think I just want to kill them. This increases our accuracy. I think this is what we want to go with. So we'll, My enemies are in for a nasty But so that surprise. does mean we will lean more into getting some luck on her. And I think uh, give her some evasion as well. She needs it. If she, she She's made out of tissue paper. She's got 75 max health. Not what we need. On our boy here, let's see. Restore mana equal. Oh wow, this can be a really good spell power team. Or... Or more importantly, we can get Wrath, because Wrath lets you just chain ultimates for Grimdor if you have a whole lot. Uh, Spectral Wave, we haven't been in position to use it because these guys have been in the front line. That can make it hit the entire thing, but then again, we're not doing that. We're using Agony quite a bit. Agony is quite nice. So we can either do the Ignition or the Curse upgrade, the look of it. We may do that. Let's see. Support, Drain, all buffs. Interrupt stances. Enemy becomes insane or inspired. An instantaneous uh, insane or inspired. It's pretty good. Reaper power. Mm, more spell power. Restores mana. So eventually he's going to be an amazing uh, mage support unit. So, but we're not there yet. I think the Agony of Fire is fine. No, actually it's not, because we're already doing fire damage It's being surpassed by the Abomination's AoE, so I think the Agony of Terror is what we want to go with. Increases his dread, and let's see. Increase your accuracy some more? I think so. Get a point there. And, uh, we'll increase your dread. I mean, we're already doing curse damage, why not? The Abomination is going to get an upgrade to probably his Battle Thumping, because that is, a. Uh, and helping us quite a lot. Lowering enemy accuracy and increasing his own would be pretty great. So I think... Oh, I had, I had the, uh, the readings backwards. So he'll be getting increased in initiative to lower theirs, lower their evasion, and lower their accuracy. Back pretty good. Battle. Pretty good. I'll go with that. And spider pack is kind of what I'm leaning towards, but maybe we want a cocoon. This is the chance of she heals herself more, which is pretty good. Or... Uh, any character that deals damage to the Black Widow receives damage back to them. So it's kind of like a bit of a small redirect onto her, or onto them. But we're using it primarily to get back health. So I think we just take the tanking skill, right? Then go over here, and we don't really need to increase her Vicar anymore. It's not really necessary. 
But we can do that, and we can increase her attack power to have a... Uh, just to be a little bit more uh, impactful with that, and then we'll increase our accuracy so she doesn't miss anything into a clutch. And then we go ahead over to the Abomination, increase her accuracy a little bit more, maybe. I don't know. I think we want to... let's see... Eh. We'll get the most umph out of increasing his initiative, I think to get that stomp going as soon as possible. So we'll bump that up, because currently he's Mr. Debuff. Mr. Debuff uh, makes him lose initiative, evasion, and accuracy, and sets them on fire for a while, so... Pretty good to have him going before anybody else. Uh, do we want to put any rags and stuff on our boys? Kinda, sorta. I mean, why not, right? We'll go ahead and put a rag on you. Override some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get two more points, and... How about uh, we upgrade that Dread a little bit more? Anything else? Here we're saving the talents. We don't really have all the artifacts. But yeah, that's Erratus. And it is another one of my favorite games. I love these type of stack em up squad, choose your own adventure type games. I don't know if you would have picked up on that by now. I assume anybody who's watched has. But we're going to save until the next one to continue along. We have a lot to go in like six levels, so I may be at this for a while, depending on whether or not I get run over in a boss fight or an elite encounter, of course. We'll see. But that will be it for today. Thank you for stopping by and checking out the channel. Please go support Erratus. I wish this game gets infinite love and updates. I can play this for a long time. It's another one of those games, and I would appreciate uh, any more support for it, because they are actually working to try and uh, working with the community to increase the longevity and enjoyment from the game. It's, it's come a long way. If you would have been here from the beginning, you'd see how much they're committed to making this game better. That's going to be it. I hope you all take care, and I'll see you next time.